Hi everyone. In today's video, we're going to be showing you a React application using Module Federation. So I have two React apps. One is called Host and App1. One. App1 one is the remote in this case. And the purpose of this video is to show a pattern for communicating between a remote and a host. So there are various ways to share data, you know, state management libraries like React, uh, you know, Redux or using React Context. Um, that's not generally the purpose of this video. React Context doesn't work 100% out of the box with module federation. Uh, you can use local storage and you can um, have some type of backing to kind of rehydrate the state in a remote once it loads, but there are some limitations. Uh, this is using just a very simple event pattern to push data from a remote back up to the host. So the key uh, use case here is just um, simulating a logging framework where a remote uh, wants to use the logger that's within the host. Um, and it does that through uh, communication uh, via events. So it's admitting the host is subscribing and taking action on those events. So app one is basically defined in the web pack. So if you're not familiar with module federation app one, is uh, defining itself as app one, and it's exposing a component called app. In the host, the host defines itself as host, but has a remote reference to app one. Um, and then I'm able to essentially import it. In this case, it's served locally in Webpack, but this could be out on a CDN, uh, and you, you could load these applications um, from you know, static file storage. So in this particular case, when you uh, react lazy in this um, module you know, federated component, uh, you're just gonna use a, a suspense boundary uh, to encapsulate that in, in case there is some type of um, latency, you know, loading up that remote. So let me run the application here. So the idea here is that this application right now is, is just two simple divs, right? Two simple components. So what I wanna show you is, uh, is an example of using uh, event admitter three. There's other ways to do this. You don't need this library. Um, I chose this particular library just because I wanted to show this logging example and I wanted it to be event driven. And I wanted to be able to have this um, very simple, very small package. And it, it also conforms with uh, Node.js's uh, event admitter. So, it looks like a, overall a, a pretty solid library. So in this particular case, I'm gonna uh, add a logging uh, React context here. Now this doesn't have to be a React context. This is essentially what I chose uh, for this particular application. And, and you could expose you know, various stuff off of this logging provider here and then use it within the host application in this case. So this is what a simple implementation would look like with the logging provider. So in this case, we're just newing up the event emitter library and we are subscribing to a log info event. Uh, as part of the signature for this, this method here, you see that the function that's being called, um, so it's an array of objects. In this case, I'm just passing it one, which is this message here, and I'm console logging it. Now, this could be a call into you know, some other class or module that does different logging functionality, but in this case, it's just a console log. So at this point, this doesn't actually do anything because nobody's emitting this event. So if we needed to emit this event and we wanted to do it from the remote, uh, we can access the logger emitter off the window object. So if I go over into app one here, because of the fact that the host is loading the remote, um, the emitter will be available when this component starts up. So this will work in this particular case. So, so when this application runs and I refresh here, you'll see test one, two, three at the bottom here. Uh, so this is just a simple example of, of doing something that's event based. Um, again, you could put some logger object on the window and you could call that logger object. I mean, that would, that would work the same here as well. Um, in the event emitter case, it is just a little more decoupled where you're essentially just kind of giving some very small discrete piece of functionality um, and then letting the host application do different things, right? So the implementation uh, could vary between the host. 
um, and the remote. So it's not a library in this case, the uh, app one or the remote app isn't tied to this functionality. It's leveraging just what's available. Um, again, this is simple implementation uh, and you know the original drawback with something like a context, and again, this doesn't have to be a context, but I could you know very easily abstract this out into a use callback and I could you know possibly expose it here on the context and then consume it within the host application. Uh, but you know, again, this is just a very simple example. Um, hopefully it's helpful as you explore module federation, uh, you'll run into um, you know, different design considerations you need to make. Um, hopefully this is one of them and you're using some type of analytics or logging uh, application performance monitor framework in your application. And if you are, hopefully this helps. Thanks.